I want to talk about how music can be evil and how we should be aware of music and how evil it can be. This is basically just going to be something that is on my heart about music and one of the many evil things in this world today that is a big problem and that most Christians aren't aware of is music. Music can be evil. And the majority of music that we hear today on the radio and on TV and on the internet was made under the influence of unclean spirits. And most Christians are unaware of the dangers that comes along with listening to this music. Most preachers and pastors or teachers won't touch on the subject of music much. And Christians are infested with wicked, worldly, satanic music. It shows in their dress. It shows in their talk. It shows in their likes and dislikes. It shows in what music they want to hear in their worship. So let's look at the Bible and come to a conclusion about music. Where did music get twisted? Uh, music was meant to give praise to God. The book of Revelation describes a worship service with harps and singing praises to God. Music didn't start out evil, and music itself isn't evil. Somewhere it got twisted. As you know, Cain killed Abel, and after this, Cain went and made the first city. And one of the descendants of Cain was named Jubal. And in Genesis 4.21, it says, Jubal was the father of all such as handle the harp and organ. If I had to guess, I'd say this is where the music got turned into something used for evil. In the book of Exodus... Moses is up on Mount Sinai, getting revelation from God, getting the Ten Commandments. And while this is going on, he hears people singing. If you read Exodus thirty-two fifteen through 18, it says, And Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand, and the tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. And the tables were the work of God, and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the tables. And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, he said unto Moses, There is a noise of war in the camp. And he said, It is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. So these people are shouting, they're singing, they're dancing and having a great time. It says he hears them singing. As you probably know, these people, the children of Israel, were worshiping a golden calf and dancing around naked. Singing can be used for evil just as much as it can be used for good. And shouting can be used for evil. There is a lot of shouting and carrying on that goes on in the charismatic churches. It is a lot of flesh on parade. Speaking in tongues and shouting and hollering can be showing off the flesh many times. If we are to judge whether or not a person is alive spiritually off of whether or not they shout in church, then the Pentecostals have us all beat. Uh, so here we have a satanic worship service in the book of Exodus. You have people singing and shouting and dancing to music. And all of these things can be used for God when giving glory to God. But you see here it is twisted. Instead of these things being in praise to God, it is rather in praise to a false God that can neither see, nor hear, nor walk. And if you go to a rock concert today, it is a complete satanic idol worship service. You have four or five devil-possessed men on stage and half-naked people dancing, singing, and shouting in the crowd, lifting up their hands in worship. The crazy thing is that parents will let their kids go to these wicked places and even be their transportation to these wicked places and this music has infected christians and they now accept the con Christ contemporary christian music which is the same wicked music they just replace the words like baby and he and she or honey they replace those words with the name jesus so they can label it christian listen to the majority of contemporary christian songs and you can change the word jesus to baby or sweetie, and it will sound just like any other pop or rock song. Bands like Casting Crowns, Third Day, Big Daddy Weave, Lecrae, The Newsboys, and all of these other Christian rockers and so-called Christian rappers are not Christian bands. I'm not judging their salvation. I don't know their heart, but their music isn't Christian. It's filthy music. They may have good words, but do good words always mean something is of God? 
Romans sixteen eighteen says, For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. These music artists may have good words and say great positive things, but they are no different than the false prophets who deceive. The so-called Christian rap and rock will keep the new convert or the baby Christian in bondage to the world, the same world that God saved him out of. By listening to the contemporary stuff, you will keep that taste for the world in your mouth. It sounds just like it. You can't tell the difference in the sound. It just may be not even... The uh, contemporary music, it's like it's not even as catchy or as good of a production as the wicked music. It's more of a corny, it's like the stuff that the secular world didn't want, so they just gave it to the contemporary crowd because they knew Christians would buy it. Uh, by listening to the contemporary stuff, you will keep the taste for the sinful world in your mouth. The music has been twisted. You have the openly evil music like Eminem and Katy Perry and Lady Gaga and Beyonce and Jay-Z. And then you have the more deceptive stuff like Hillary Scott who sings Thy Will Be Done. And Hillary Scott shows the fruit of the contemporary music, the fruit that it brings. Because in part of her music she is giving the illusion of giving glory to God. And then in the other part of her music she is giving glory to Satan. You may not know this, but she is also presently in the country group Lady Antebellum who sing about getting drunk and committing fornication. We need to be aware of these things. This music has been twisted, but many times is deceiving and Christians don't understand it is sinful. At one of Billy Graham's more newer meetings that he had a few years back, he had a musical performer named Lacey Storm. And Lacey Storm was a member of the so-called Christian rock group Flyleaf, which doesn't even sound Christian in the slightest bit. This is a wicked band that performs songs by other bands like Nirvana. And Nirvana was an openly satanic, God-denying band. Even Lacey Storm's latest music is straight out of hell. And a lot of these bands like Flyleaf, Red, Skillet, Disciple, Creed, and all of these other so-called Christian bands, some that aren't even around anymore. I listened to them before I was even saved, and I had no idea they were Christian bands. I had no idea Creed was a Christian band. There's something wrong if a lost person can listen to that music and think that it's not Christian. Um, I'm not saying this music isn't catchy. Our sinful flesh likes it. Although we're saved, we still have our sinful flesh. I'm not saying my, my flesh doesn't like the sound of contemporary music. Because it does. A lot of it sounds catchy. And you hear it one time and you're singing it all day long. But that doesn't make it right. Just because they have good words doesn't make the beat or the instrumental part of the music any less sinful. You know what I'm talking about when I say that. The music sounds just like secular music. The music is sensual and leads to fornication, wicked dancing, fighting, anger, and depression. There is a depressing, depressing spirit that comes over me when I hear a contemporary Christian song. And maybe it doesn't do that for you, but I've heard testimony of other Christians that say contemporary music brings a depressing spirit. And this doesn't happen to me with real godly music. Uh, the sound of the song, I can only imagine, you know, they got a movie coming out about it, is very depressing to me. That song just get, makes me overcome with depression for some reason. It's a depressing spirit behind the song. The words are good, sure, but is the music okay? Country music is also wicked. I believe the country artists are more wicked than men like Rob Zombie, for the same reason that America is more wicked than Sodom and Gomorrah. Um, if the stuff that went on in America had happened in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented if they had a King James Bible, if they had all the preaching and all the light that God gave to America. Sodom and Gomorrah would have probably repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. We have a lot of light in this country, especially in the Bible Belt, where a majority of country singers are located. 
Yet these country singers live for the flesh and sing about fulfilling the desires of the flesh. Why is there not more preaching and teaching against country music? Because Christians like it. They hear the country singers do their gospel CDs, and this is to mo supposed to make their other wicked music that they sing okay. I have more respect for Eminem than I do someone like Miranda Lambert. At least Eminem at least knows or tells us where he stands. He stands against God. He's not deceiving anybody in that aspect. While these country singers will sing about loving Jesus Christ and going to church in one song, and then they sing something wicked than the next song about getting drunk, committing fornication, getting vengeance on their ex-husband, and the list goes on. The country group, Florida Georgia Line, has one of the most blasphemous songs that's on the radio right now. The whole song is about worshiping a woman. Throughout the song, they call their uh, girlfriend or whoever it is holy and talk about getting drunk and high off of her love. And they always have to have references to getting drunk or high. They always have to throw in little things about Jesus Christ and church and the Bible. Yet they always mix it with something sinful. They are marketed to people in the Bible Belt who have been exposed to the Bible. But most Christians are worldly. And they only think about fulfilling the desires of the flesh. So this is why mixing church and something sinful works and sells. Florida Georgia Line performs songs with rappers like Nelly who sings about smoking pot and committing fornication. He rubs on underage girls on stage like some kind of pedophile. And Blake Shelton's music, men like him and Luke Bryan or Jason Aldean, that music is complete filth out of hell that talks about getting drunk in almost every single song. And that is, this is nothing but glory, glorifying to Satan. Satan loves for people to sing about something that is an abomination to God. It is an abomination to get drunk. But yet Christians sing along with it in the car on the way to and from work, to and from church, to and from school. The kids are in the back seat. They listen to it. They take the kids to the concerts. But it's okay because we go to church on Sunday. I sometimes consider the contemporary and Christian music to be more evil than heavy metal and secular rap because it is more deceptive. People are deceived by bands like Metallica and Nickelback and uh, Stained, uh, Bullet For My Valentine, and all them really hardcore sounding bands, but they aren't deceived about what these guys are. They know that they're not Christian. They're not deceived by them in that way. They know that it's it's wrong. These bands like them don't claim to be Christian. It is way less deceptive. And in this way, this is Satan coming at people as a roaring lion more than as an angel of light. Sometimes he comes as an angel of light and he's deceptive. Second Corinthians eleven thirteen through 15 says, For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And that uh, contemporary music is Satan coming as an angel of light. Contemporary music disguises itself as holy and righteous. The secular stuff, not so much. So the contemporary is more deceptive. The country music, sadly, is very deceptive, but only because Christians today, especially in 2018, have absolutely no discernment. There really is no excuse for country music deceiving people because they talk about getting drunk in every single song. And you can hear it when you go through the store. Every store you go into, if you live in the South, is playing country music, and it's talking about getting drunk at least one time in the song. And in Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar uses music to get people to worship a satanic image. Music is associated with the worship of something, even if it is the worship of yourself. And a common theme in, the, in music is living for the flesh, 
doing what you want and being rebellious. The do what thou wilt philosophy of the Satanist Aleister Crowley is all through music. The uh, rappers like Jay-Z will wear that phrase on his shirt. And that's very well known. I'm sure you've seen that where Jay-Z has that on his shirt. He'll also wear shirts that says Jesus is Lord, but Jesus is on fire in the picture. He'll also wear a shirt that has Satan sodomizing Jesus Christ. But yet Christians will listen to Jay-Z and Beyonce, his wife, just like that it's no problem and God's okay with it. Uh, I have a daughter who is almost two years old, and the thoughts of these wicked artists and rappers deceiving my daughter when she gets older makes me angry. Sometimes it is good to be angry. The Bible says, Be ye angry and sin not. Jesus got mad because they turned his house into a den of thieves. And although I don't call the church building the house of God, Christians are turning their local churches into businesses. Worldly music gets them more people and more lost people and leads to more money. Andy Stanley's church is one of the most devilish churches I've seen. They don't just use the contemporary music. They have moved on to playing very sinful secular music. And that is where it leads. I saw where an Eminem song was being played in a church somewhere. And things don't get better, they get worse. The people are so used to hearing contemporary music that sounds like the world that they eventually won't care to hear Beyonce and Katy Perry sung in their worship services. And I believe it was Andy Stanley's church who opened the services with singing uh, family sitcom theme songs. And that is just strange and bizarre. And although that may not look evil, it seems like this these strange and bizarre things like this go beyond flesh and get into being devilish. And this is just all about money. The Bible says, For the love of money is the root of all evil. And this is the cause of contemporary Christian music and fake Bibles. Uh, if you listen to interviews of these contemporary watered-down artists, you will find out they have all something in common. They use the New Age Bibles. Or they're okay with the New Age Bibles. They may use the King James, but they don't believe that that's the perfect word of God. They think you can use any of the Bibles. And the Bible says evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Christians are being deceived by wicked music, and they have no shame about the music they listen to. They post it on Facebook for everyone to see and completely ruin their testimony. Demas in the Bible loved this present evil world. And it seems most Christians today are going back to Egypt, a type of the world. And they are back listening to the same old music a lost person desires. The so-called Christian rapper Lecrae is claiming to help the lost world through his music with something they relate to. So he is basically trying to help people with the very thing which is keeping them in the world. The rap genre was created by a bunch of white men who wanted to cause more crime. And the gangster rap artists aren't really gangsters. They are actors being used by wicked men and the devil to promote violence and demoralize people. The music industry is controlled by men in high up uh, positions who are controlled by spiritual wickedness in high places. Ephesians 6.12 says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. Music is making people lose their morals. It promotes every sin spoken against in the Bible. Sodomy, adultery, violence, deceit, revenge. Every sin mentioned in the Bible. Wicked men who are out for total control use things like music to demoralize the masses. And when a country loses its morals and lives for the flesh... It leads to their destruction. The Bible says the sin of Sodom was pride, fullness of bread, and abundance of idleness. And that is America. People have too much pride to come to God and get saved. They are full of bread with their food stamps. And they are idle all day long. They sit around doing nothing but eating, drinking, and being merry. 
listening to music, playing video games, watching the new popular TV show. They don't want to retain God in their knowledge. They're lazy. They don't want to work. So they rely on the government, and this will lead to their destruction. It is easier for someone to take control over you if you are relying on them for every little thing. Ephesians 5.19 says, Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. So what kind of music should we listen to? Songs that glorify God. You say, well, some of your contemporary music glorifies God, but what about the actual music part of it? Does the beat sound wicked? The words and the beat need to match. If the beat is wicked, then the whole thing is wrong. It doesn't matter how many times they say the name of Jesus in the song. If the beat is sinful, then you shouldn't listen to the song. If there is a question on whether or not that music that you're listening to is sinful, then you shouldn't listen to it because it most likely is. Any music that glorifies things that are sinful is of the devil. And if you love the Lord, you will hate evil. We are saved by grace through faith without works, but we need to try our best to live right. And listening to wicked music isn't right. It's wrong and it is killing the entire country, ruining the spiritual life of Christians and your local churches. It is making people more immoral and desensitized and in turn harder to win to Jesus Christ. But if you're listening to this and you're not a saved person, if you haven't believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible is clear about how to be saved. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 3 and 4, it says, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So the gospel, the good news, glad tidings, is that, Jesus Christ died, he died for you, he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Jesus Christ died by shedding his blood. He shed his blood on the cross to pay for your sins. And if you will come to him as the guilty sinner that you are, and you put your faith in him and what he did on the cross to be the payment for your sin, then you can be saved and have eternal life. You can't earn your way to heaven or pay for your sins by living right or by doing good things. The only way to get your sins paid for and took away completely is by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross to be your payment for your sin. You receive that as your payment. You don't just believe that Jesus is real and that He existed and that He died you don't just believe that was history. You also have to put your trust in it. Meaning you're going to rely on Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone to save you and get you to heaven. And that is believing with your heart. So if you want to be saved, come to Jesus Christ as a guilty sinner and believe on Him. The Bible says in Romans 10.13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16.31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But I hope if you're listening to wicked music, that you'll get rid of this wicked music. But if you're not saved, then don't make not listening to wicked music your priority. Get saved first, and then Jesus can help you quit listening to this filthy music. But for the Christians... Get rid of the wicked music in your house, in your car, on your iPhone, on your iPad, and get some music that glorifies God.